is the Garden of France, the land of castles, and where some of the most affordable French wines can be found. About 200 miles long and less than two hours from Paris, the Loire Valley wine region is as diverse as its wines are delicious. The more you, you drink wines, the more you want to learn. Our educational adventure begins not in the beginning, but in the middle, Loire that is, with the spotlight on the Anjou and Saumur appellations. We are in uh, 2014, which is very important here, celebrating the centenary of the First Great War. And uh, we have some uh, labels here of vintage 1914. And the other day we found one from 1895. This room could talk. Yes. If these labels could talk. Check this out. This is called Cabin de Vin or House of the Vine. This is where vineyard workers come every day around noon to take a break. Now, back in the day, they used to have their horses with them. So a Cabin de Vin like this has two rooms. Some of these cabins only have one room. So that means men and horse, well, they're getting a little too close for comfort, if you ask me. The grape growing tradition here in the Anjou Appalachian dates back over a thousand years. The main grapes here are Chenin Blanc, Cab Franc, and Grolo. Rolo tastes good. Mm. Gros is a uh, local grapes of Anjou and we produce a lot of uh, rosé with uh, these grapes. Popular wine in Anjou is uh, Coteau du Layon. It's a very sweet wine with uh, uh, Chenin Blanc grapes. Uh, Savenière is a very beautiful, excellent wine with Chenin Blanc uh, grapes as well. And Anjou, Anjou Appalachian. With Chenin Blanc. Dry, off dry, or sweet, the diversity of Chenin Blanc is why it's regularly dubbed the French Riesling. I produce 12 different wines, rosy wine, white wine, red wine, but the speciality for my domain is Coteau du Léon. This is a sweet wine with a Chenin Blanc. Chenin Blanc, this is the best grape variety of the Loire Valley. Saving the best for last isn't always a saving grace here in the land of castles. Sweet wine for me is good with a, this is an aperitif wine. In the United States, I think you drink this wine in dessert wine. It's for me, it's a problem because this is an aperitif wine, not a dessert wine. Take a closer look at the face behind the place and discover family-run wineries that have been working the land long before the French Revolution. I work with my parents. We are five uh, people on the domain. I love my work. We're here in the Loire Valley at a domain that's been keeping it all in the family for eight generations. I work with my uh, father. My husband is a chef. He, he has his uh, restaurant uh, in the domain. Is it hard working with your husband or is it easy? It's easy because I produce wine and he makes food. <laughs> you keep it separate, right? Yes. <laughs> What's the secret to making a dish like this? It looks beautiful. Uh, no secrets. Just using uh, fresh produce. Uh, tomatoes from the garden and uh, seasonal produce. It's very important. My father, my grandfather work uh, a lot very hard to have a beautiful, uh, nice uh, domain. Maybe my daughter later. <laughs> I don't know. Next stop, Samur, the Loire Valley's premium sparkling wine region. We have a crazy place to make sparkling wines. We are very lucky, we have the vineyard on the top of the cliff here. We have uh, four kilometers of cave. This cave at 12 degrees are really perfect to, to make sure uh, some fantastic sparkling wine. So this is why we are quite lucky. You can really find some very great, uh, fresh, elegant uh, wine uh, for a nice price and it's really good to match with food. Here in the area there is a famous, uh, famous fish, the cendre in French, it's a, it's a white fish, uh, really good to go with Chenin Blanc. There is uh, vegetable for sure with the asparagus, the white asparagus. I think we are one of the unique wineries who work on Chenin Blanc uh, from the beginning to the end and try to explain Chenin Blanc from sparkling wine to sweet wines. Just take a look around and you'll see sparkling wine houses line the streets here in Samir. Here you are in our cellars where we also have uh, 1,200 barrels where we make our uh, oak barrel aged cuvee since over 25 years. My father was the first one to begin this kind of winemaking with sparkling in the Loire Valley. We have the perfect 
soil to make sparkling wine and also beautiful white steel wines and reds. But for making sparkling wine, it's very special because of this chalk, this limestone, because it brings out a lot of element of minerality that you want to have in having a crisp sparkling wine and enjoying it. My family, family Montmousseau, has been making sparkling wine in the Loire Valley since uh, 1886. So we have a strong legacy into making sparkling wines. Our wine growers, uh, their families have been providing us uh, juices since decades. So not only one family, but many families that have been working together since generations. My parents purchased this winery for the same price they could have had the winery in Champagne. But we were from Loire Valley, so we stayed in the Loire Valley. You've been here for a few days and you can probably capture that there's a certain gentleness of, of living. We call it douceur de vivre. And um, it always has been a protected place, even throughout the wars, even uh, uh, through industrial times. We, we still don't have any uh, major industry other than receiving you and making wines. Perhaps it's the laid-back lifestyle, the luscious landscapes, or the legacy left behind by king and queens that makes the lure of the Loire Valley oh so sweet. I will raise my glass to that. Do you have a cheers or a toast, something that you say around your house? Cheers or? A cheers, santé, bien sûr, santé. Santé. If you could drink one wine for the rest of your life, what wine would it be? Uh... <laughs> A Côte du Lyon. For Wino TV, I'm Monique Saltani.